Hello and welcome. So recently I tested the Lenovo Lock 15, which is a very budget oriented laptop for 2023 from Lenovo. And we found that the base offering was only equipped with a single single eight gigabyte DDR5 stick for essentially what we thought would be single channel RAM. However, it turns out that the story is a little bit different. With DDR5, each module essentially runs in double data rate mode. So that means even a single gigabyte, single stick of eight gigabyte DDR5 RAM is operating in double channel mode. So what then is the difference between eight gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of RAM, particularly for gaming workloads? And how does that affect the gameplay frame rates, the average frame rates, and particularly the 1% lows, which determine essentially how smooth and good of a gameplay experience you'll have. So let's jump in here and we'll take a look at some benchmarks that have been done for eight gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes with 10 selected games on the Lock 15 after an upgrade from a single eight gigabyte DDR5 stick to two eight gigabyte DDR5 sticks running in dual channel mode with 5,600 megahertz, the same as the original eight gigabyte stick that was included in the Lenovo Lock 15. After we look at the benchmarks, please stay tuned. I've got a little bit bonus for you guys. I'm gonna be showing you some additional benchmarks that I've done with some new games I've acquired in the holiday sales season uh, for this laptop. And we'll be doing those only on the 16 gigabyte equipped model. And we'll show you what the performance looks like if you were to just launch these games, not spend too much time fiddling around, just crank it to the highest settings that are available in the game and then just get to your gameplay. So stay tuned for that and let's jump right in. So we start off here with taking a look at Assassin's Creed Mirage. Keep in mind that all of these were done at 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution in performance mode. We get a nice big boost from 16 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel, nearly doubling the frame rates here and also the averages. If we move over to City Skylines, this is a very taxing game. So you can see here that we do get a very noticeable bump up in frame rates. However, still, uh, there is a lot of performance to be had here. And the 1% lows and the minimums all jump up thanks to that double data rate ramp. Same thing is exhibited in Cyberpunk. However, this is a little bit less visible here. I believe this may be due to GPU bound games. But if you look at those minimums and those 1% low averages, that will really help to get a smoother gameplay experience. As we move along to Diablo 4, the average frame rate is kind of tied at 150, but if you look at the 1% lows and the minimum average, absolutely amazing boost to performance there. So that is basically what will determine how smooth and how good an overall gameplay experience you have and how lack of jittery your gameplay is. Doom Eternal, again, this was a surprise for me. I tested this a few different times to confirm and indeed having double or, or DDR5 RAM in double channel in this game really gives a boost. But if you look at the 1% lows and minimums, the trend is continuing there with almost, uh, you know, big increases there as well. Far Cry 6, there's also increases all across the board here. However, not as much as some of the other games, but nonetheless, 76 to 93 FPS average is a big boost, particularly those 1% lows from 20 up to 42. In Hogwarts Legacy, we've got a nice noticeable boost at the average frame rates. The 1% lows seem to be tight and the minimum for some reason has receded in performance. I ran this a few different times, but you know, it's a little bit within margin of error, but there's very little change on the minimum frame rates. And Red Dead Redemption 2, of course, with DLSS quality in Vulcan, uh, we've got to tie here for average frame rates, but again, we're seeing a nice boost to 1% low averages and also for minimum frame rates. Those are what determine how good and smooth the gameplay experience we have. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this was a bit of an outlier as we see that the average here has receded in terms of performance, but we've got more stable performance due to the fact that we've got higher 1% lows and also minimum frame rates in this particular game due to double channel or du dual channel RAM. In The Witcher 3 here, a little bit of the same story as we saw in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a little bit of performance recession in terms of the average frame rates, but we do get a nice boost up to 1% lows and the minimum frame rates, so it's kind of pretty much keeping in line with the rest of the stats here. And finally, if we take a look at Watch Dogs Legion, again, a little bit of the, the repeated performance here. We've got a recession in the average frame rates, but you can see here that the minimum is basically tied, whereas we get a slight, perhaps, if anything, average boost frame rate. All right, so then, to conclude, is it worth getting 16 gigabytes of RAM in 2023 for gaming and beyond? And the answer is an astounding yes. 
Now, with the exception of a few games that seem to have some recession in their average frame rates, if we look at the overall trend, everything is positive. We've got anywhere from near doubling the frame rates in average up to you know 50%, 60% and beyond in terms of performance improvements. What is more important, however, is that those 1% low averages bumped up quite a bit and even the minimum frame rates in many cases jumped up quite a bit. Now, what that means is as you're playing the game, inevitably it will fall down to those 1% lows or to those minimum frame rates as there's loading, there's glitches, there's too much happening on the screen, you don't have enough GPU horsepower or enough wattage to drive those types of graphics at particular resolution. What will thus happen is your frame rate will drop and if your 1% low is higher as a result of having 16 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel versus just 8 gigabytes of RAM, then I think that will inevitably give you a smoother and a better overall perceived user experience in terms of your gameplay and your gaming experience. So it isn't more, more it isn't really about the dual channel, I think, in this particular visual video that should be the takeaway, but rather that more is necessarily better, particularly as we go into 2024, as we've probably known, 8 gigabytes gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes does improve improve and boost the performance and that has certainly been demonstrated here with these benchmarks and of course beyond now stay tuned for the bonus benchmarks here it'll just be a few little clips i won't leave you guys uh, hanging for too long and i'll just comment a few things that i really want to say about 16 gigabytes of ram the lenovo lock 15 the rtx 4050 and what a budget gamer can expect from a device of this caliber at this price class going into 2024 all right, now for the bonus content. So here we are looking at Company of Heroes 3. This is a new game that was released earlier this year, a long awaited sequel to the Company of Heroes 2 strategy game. So this one here, as we can see, it's running at nearly 70 FPS. Of course, it does dip down to around 60 FPS as the fighting gets more intense, but keep in mind that this is running with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I've added another stick to the eight gigabyte that was provided by Lenovo in the base model offering for the Lenovo Lock, uh, Lock 15. But considering that this was around $1,200 on sale, and that's in Canadian dollars, I think this is an absolute bargain in terms of the build quality, the construction, the overall experience, you know, the lightweightness of this laptop. Thermals, of course, could be a little bit better, but there's really nothing to complain about. Uh, and I think overall, the value that you get from this laptop is absolutely unmatched. Now, let's talk about that RTX 4050 in this device for a minute. Well, we know that the RTX 4050 is the entry level GPU in this device from Nvidia for the RTX 4000 series. They were introduced at CES this year in 2023, but I think that's gonna stay for another good year because the RTX 5000 series is not coming at the earliest until January of 2025, which means you've got a lot of leeway here and instead of waiting, it's better for you to get something now if you require a laptop now, and this will give you a great budget offering that you can enjoy in all different kinds of scenarios, whether it be for school, for work, carrying it around, just having it as a casual laptop. And if you are the type of gamer that uses your laptop for everything, it is your only computing device, and you like to use it for gaming, entertainment, content consumption, work, office stuff, etc. I think you'll have a great time here. The purchase price for this particular laptop when on sale was around 1200 Canadian dollars. And I think that is an absolute bargain and a steal. Of course, you can pay three times as much for a 4090 equipped laptop. You know, maybe you'll get a better screen, a bigger screen, you'll get more RAM, of course, you'll get a larger SSD. But considering that the prices of RAM and SSD are really at their lowest in, in few years, it is a great time to pick up this budget value champ I believe for under around $1,200 Canadian or $1,300 depending on what sale is currently running. Equip it to your heart's consent with the amount of RAM you'd like, a larger SSD, and just have a blast. I've been thoroughly impressed with the RTX 4050 as well as the Lenovo Lock 15. Lenovo really has a winner on their hands here and it should not be looked past when you're looking for your new budget gaming laptop choice. And there you have it. That's the Lenovo Lock 15 and 8 gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes of RAM for 2023 and particularly for gaming. So even though you're only getting 8 gigabytes of RAM on the base offering, you can totally do just fine as you'll see that there's definitely playability of games in this particular uh, configuration. But if you were to bump up to 16 gigabytes, it's a whole another experience in terms of your gaming enjoyment from this particular budget-oriented laptop. And that RTX 4050, particularly with DLSS, 
DLSS 3 and frame generation is no slouch. So unless you're a very hardy picked, you know, or a very picky, nitpicky gamer, you're gonna have a tremendous time here with this budget offering. From, from my point of view, this is a budget champ for the year. As long as you can kit it out with your own specifications of RAM, your own quantity of RAM, and your own SSD, which you can, as those are both user serviceable and quite easily so, it's going to be a great champion for the year to come, considering we're not going to get the RTX 5000 series until at least the beginning of 2025. So you've got a year of perhaps solid gaming and safe gameplay experience before you need to switch up or even think about upgrading to the next generation. So hope you enjoyed this, enjoyed this content and you learned something. If you found this useful, please leave a comment below and let me know what was most interesting to you or if you learned something. Also, please like my channel and uh, you know subscribe subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit that ding, hit and ding that notification bell so you know when new videos are released. Also, I've started multi-streaming on Twitch, on Kick, and on YouTube with live gameplay sessions almost nightly. So please tune in for that and also follow me on my other social media channels. And I'll also be getting some exclusive content up on my Instagram in terms of behind the scenes footage and some demo reels about products as I'm actually in the process of reviewing them. And also get subscribed to my TikTok where you'll be finding some highlights and also a daily news for tech that I'll be starting very, very soon. So get subscribed everywhere, follow my channel, and please continue to support so we can help grow this type of content. And thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.